Interference is a theory of forgetting in which information is lost because of the competition of other material. In this clip I'm going to focus on proactive and retroactive interference. Retro in this context meaning backwards. So retro, retroactive interference occurs when we have newly learned information inhibiting the retrieval of previously learnt material. And that's because when we learn new information we make new associations with existing material in our long-term memory. This weakens existing associations of similarly learned information in our long-term memory and thus we have this form of forgetting. A good example of this is when we have material that's been well learned and understood from the past that's been subsequently interfered with by new content, particularly when it's similar in nature to the previous material we learnt. Think about some of the content that you might have learnt in science, history, geography in your earlier years and how much of this you can't actually recall because of the interference of some of the other humanity subjects, for instance, or science subjects that you've learnt consequently. This is an experiment I'm going to run with my class at a later date to reinforce the theory of retroactive interference. So using a convenient sample of the um, students in my psychology class, I'm going to run an independent groups design in which I'm going to have half the class exposed to the IV, which will be an interference task, so they're going to be my experimental group, and the other half of the class will be my control group and they'll serve as a baseline measure. So I'm going to create two lists of 15 three-letter nonsense syllables, and I'll flash them one at a time for four seconds, which is long enough for the students to sub-vocalise each of those nonsense syllables. And I'm using nonsense syllables so that they can't use elaborate rehearsal. At the end of the minute, both groups are going to do a distracting task where they're going to count backwards from 200 by threes until they get under 100. And then I'm going to get the control group to recall as many as they can and I'll work out the average recall rate for the control group. After the uh, experimental group has finished counting backwards, I'm going to expose them to a different list of 13, th uh, 15 three-letter nonsense syllables. And then at the end of the minute, I'm going to ask them to recall as many items as they can from the original list to see if that list B has interfered with list A, retroactively, of course. So my dependent variable is how many of the nonsense syllables the participants can recall. The IV, the variable I'm manipulating, is whether the participants have been exposed to the interfering list B or not. So that's my hypothesis, is that participants who had an interfering task between the learning of that list A and the recall of that list A of nonsense syllables, they're going to have a lower recall rate than my control group who had no interference after learning and then recalling. Yes, there's been the distracting activity with counting backwards, but when I talk about interference, I'm talking about learning a similar list. Proactive interference, pro in this context, meaning forwards, occurs when we have information that's learned beforehand, inhibits the retrieval of newly learned information. So, in this case, the traces of the original learning that occurred is going to muddle up our retrieval of newly learned information. Now the textbooks love the language examples. For instance, you're in, let's say, year 7 and you learn French and you embrace French and then in year 8 you drop French and pick up German, two European languages, and your French proactively interferes with your ability to master the German language. Let me give you a sporting example. When I was about 11 I started playing basketball and uh, I got pretty serious at it. I was a point guard. I played for about 15 years in all sorts of teams at varying levels. And then um, in my mid-twenties I started playing in a mixed netball team with my wife. And 15 years of basketball proactively interfered with my ability to play netball because in basketball you can dribble a ball, you can't do that netball. In basketball you can get right in the grill of uh, the person you're defending, you can't do that in netball. So the ref was continually um, whistling me for various infringements that I made while I was on the netball court because I was literally instinctively playing like a basketball player and uh, 
I think it would have taken me, if I had the patience, several years to actually master netball because um, basketball was just so ingrained in my, in my mindset. Wiccan did a number of interference experiments. I just want to focus on one aspect of his 1973 experiment. He got five groups of participants and he read out three fruits. And then at the end of that, he got them to count backwards 15 seconds to, in order to eliminate the use of rehearsal. And then he got them to recall as many of the words as they can. Not hard for the initial one, obviously. And then he repeated this with three new fruits. And again, got them to count backwards and then asked them to remember as many as they can from that second list. And then so on for the third trial. Then we, when he got to the fourth trial, each group got a different set of words. The control group got three fruits again. Another group got vegetables, another group got flowers, another group got meat, another group got professions. In terms of the results, for the first trial we had a very high recall rate for all five groups. Now the traces of this original learning proactively interfered significantly with the recall of the second group of fruits and even more significant for the third trial of fruits. And then when we got to the fourth trial, what you need to understand here is the more dissimilar the items to be recalled to the fruits, the higher the retrieval rate. So vegetables are similar to fruit, obviously. So therefore, we only have a slightly higher recall rate. Flowers are less similar. Meat are even less similar. And professions are very unsimilar to fruits. So the more similar the information, the more significant the retrieval because of the traces of that original learning interferes with the subsequent learning, which is a useful point in terms of the education system. That is, when studying, when structuring our school days, we should try and avoid, say, putting humanities classes back to back or science classes back to back. Let's put a language with PE. Let's put music with maths, etc. So what causes interference? Well, stimulus similarity, which might explain why we have difficulty with some phone numbers, because in Australia anyway, all mobile phone numbers are 10 digits. When we learn content close together in time and in large volumes of information, and when we learn information in the same context, e.g. a classroom, this can actually enhance the interference.